So, well, thank you for agreeing to talk to me. Um, I mean, I think it's fair to say for those of us in this space, you're one of the most well-known um, climate scientists, very outspoken and regularly consulted by the press. So, you know, what we've seen this year, 2018, with the extreme weathers, uh, weather events, so the, the heat wave and now the, the hurricanes, Hurricane Florence, for example, and the super typhoon in the Pacific, you regularly spend your time talking to the press about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is the summer. Summer 2018 is the summer where climate change uh, truly showed its hand. Um, the impacts of climate change are no longer subtle. We see them play out in real time on our television screens, in our newspaper headlines, and sort of just this unprecedented uh, onslaught of uh, heat waves, droughts, floods, and superstorms that we've seen in recent months I think has finally awakened the public's imagination. You think so? Attention. I mean, we've maybe been here before, but you think yeah. this is it? You think this is the tipping point to use that climate term? <laughs> well, it's always dangerous, right? And there are two different tipping points we face. There's the climate tipping points where yeah. we commit, you know, to truly catastrophic and irreversible changes in climate. And hopefully there's another tipping point that comes sooner, which is the, the tipping point in the public consciousness when it comes to acting on the problem. I think one thing that registered in the UK, there's a lot of comparisons to the previous um, heat, massive heat wave like this yeah. in 1976. Yeah. But I saw an interesting chart, global chart. The 76 heat wave in the UK was very isolated to the UK. This time, I mean, it truly was a sort of global heat wave. That's right. And that's, that's really what causes great concern. It was just the global coherence of these extreme weather events that we saw this summer. It's one thing when one country is struggling to deal with an extreme weather event, um, but when you've got uh, literally the entire uh, planet uh, yeah. simultaneously dealing uh, with these extreme damaging weather events, then you're really starting to, 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 to sort of transition into, into new territory. Um, so, so the implications of being here, fact, you know, I I, how can we not talk about where we are. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's incredible. But even here, we're beginning to feel the effects. And I was very struck by something you said in the symposium um, this morning, which is warming here is actually having an impact on the those, those very same weather events, you know, that we've been experiencing, those heat waves. Yeah. I mean, how, how does that work? I mean, in simple terms. Yeah, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. I um, like that. <laughs> and the, the melting of ice that we're seeing up here is actually impacting uh, the entire planet uh, in a number of ways. Uh, you know, the Arctic is sort of uh, our planet's refrigerator. Uh, okay. And as we lose that ice, as we lose the sea ice, uh, and at current rates uh, of ice loss, we're going to have an ice-free Arctic uh, nice. sea at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the summer. Uh, we're, we're likely to see ice-free Arctic conditions within a couple decades if we continue on the trajectory that we're on. Now, when you melt all that ice in the Arctic and you... Oh, one of the planes coming in, I think, you know, up there. Oh, wow. There you are. It's yeah. amazing. It's coming in, uh, you actually see the structure of the ice. You see yes. the melting uh, of the ice, uh, the melting of the glaciers, the melting of the sea ice. There should be more sea ice in this area uh, than there yeah, is now. Yeah, I was now. struck by that. I mean, yeah. I, was, I was just using my iPhone to take some pictures yeah. of the plane. It was pretty noisy, but I, I was struck by the ripples on the glaciers. Yeah. Is that... Well, that's what, yeah, in, in, in some of those are actually ice shelves where the ice comes out onto the ocean uh, like a platform and it's sitting uh, on the ocean. And the good news is when those ice shelves melt, they don't contribute to sea level rise because they're already floating on the ocean. The problem is when those ice sheets, when those ice shelves melt, they allow the inland ice suddenly to surge into the ocean. And so that's it's like, where. It's like removing a dam almost. Yeah, yeah, it's a buttress. The ice okay. shelf is essentially a buttress holding back the inland ice. Uh, so when we melt the ice up here in the Arctic, um, we're actually changing temperatures, temperature patterns in the Arctic. And it's the variation in temperature when you go from the warm tropics right. to the cold Arctic. It's that gradient, we call it. It's that contrast in temperature which creates the jet stream in the first place. Right. And so if you start to lose that contrast because you're, you're warming the Arctic more than the rest of the planet, you're starting to lose that temperature contrast as you go north. And as you lose that temperature contrast, you slow down the jet stream and you cause it to sort of uh, exhibit these very wide meanders, these up and down wiggles, sort of like a river 
that's traveling over relatively flat land where you get these very wide meanders. It, it travels okay. very slowly. It wiggles uh, back and forth. Well, that's sort of what the jet stream is doing because we're decreasing that temperature contrast. Because this summer, there's a lot of, sorry, this, this winter just gone, there was a lot of talk about the fact the Arctic was actually warmer at, at some points than you know, in the UK, for example. I mean, it was just incredible. Yeah, no, there have been times in recent years, a uh, number of them, where you could go north in the northern hemisphere and temperatures get warmer. And that's unusual. And, it, and that's what we refer to as uh, Arctic amplification. Global warming is greater up in the Arctic than it is over much of the rest of the planet. And that has huge implications, like we just said, for the jet stream. You decrease that, that temperature contrast by warming the Arctic a lot um, you slow down the jet stream. You slow down the jet stream, you start to get those extreme summer weather patterns and they just stick around. So the Arctic is a little bit like a, excuse the pun, but a canary in the coal mine. It, it is. It, it is because we've seen more warming in the Arctic than we've seen elsewhere. So if we want to see sort of how impactful a warming planet can yeah. be, um, the Arctic is a good place to look. But again, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay there. It's actually impacting weather patterns in Europe, in North America, and this summer, these uh, extreme weather patterns, um, you know, the unprecedented droughts yeah. and floods and heat waves, and uh, those were associated with a very unusual jet stream pattern that we're fairly certain now is being made uh, more frequent by human-caused warring. So, so just as I mean, finish. I mean, what what should we be expecting, and what what are we likely to see um, going forward? Well, you know, 2018. Uh, may be a depiction of, you know, what life is going to be like uh, for decades to come. Um, we're now in a, a, a sort of a, a period of elevated risk uh, because of global warming and the impact it's having on extreme weather events. And, you know, 2018, which is this extreme summer, uh, unprecedented heat waves across the Northern Hemisphere and the wildfires in the Arctic, up here in yeah. the Arctic, uh, well, that may become a typical summer wow. uh, in a matter of decades if we continue on the course that we're on. And an extreme summer, decades from now, we don't have an analog for what that would look like. So we really are, I mean, playing with fire. I mean, this is, this is a massive experiment. With the, we, the mean, only planet that we know right now in the universe that can support life. <laughs> there's no, what do they say? Uh, there's no... Uh, there's no planet B. No planet B, which is... <laughs> no. A little bit worrying. Okay, well, look, thank you. Um, and it's been an incredible conversation with yet another climate rock star. So um, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and you know, I really hope you're getting a feel for the sort of people that are you know, dedicating their lives to, I think, what is one of the biggest issues, the biggest issue that, that's facing mankind. Thank you. Thanks so much.